Okay, we are ready to begin the hand tool practice object number one. Uh, I'm going to read this through, so if you're uh, following along with me, you can read along in the packet. The purpose of this exercise is not to make something beautiful that you will cherish forever, but to practice using a variety of hand tools safely and correctly. Once you appreciate how each hand tool works, you'll better understand how to use its powered cousin. Of course, a real woodworker will appreciate the value of a good hand tool and could finish this block by hand before you even plug in the miter saw. Here are some of the tools you use. Looking at the pictures here, we've got the back saw, the chisel, the pattern, the tape measure, the coping saw, the pencil, the block plane, the combination square, the chisel, and the tri-square. Let's go take a look at those in the tool cabinet. Here's our tool cabinet. To open this, we need to first open the lid. And to open the drawers, we need to find the sliding lever right here to slide and open. They're either on the right or on the left. Okay, the first tool on our list is the back saw. You'll find this in the bottom drawer. It's called the back saw because it's got a back support on here on the back of the blade. We'll use this in combination with the miter box. The miter box is found on the bottom of the tool cart. Okay. The next item on the list is the chisel. You'll find these in the drawer. There are eight of these. We try to keep these so sharp I can shave with them. It's very important when you're working with a chisel never to work against metal, always to keep it over wood. If you're working over a metal vise, it might be helpful to put an extra block of wood in to protect the chisel from getting damaged. Next item on the list is something called a pattern. This lives in here with the coping saws. And these are just tracing patterns. You can see this one's been damaged, so I'm not going to use that. I'll choose this one instead. When we get to this point, we'll trace around this to make the mark we need to cut with the coping saw. The next item on the list is the tape measure. These live over here, and we'll use these to measure the length and the width of the board. It's important to note that on the tape measure, there's this metal band that slides back and forth. That's so that if I'm pushing or pulling, it's adjusting for the thickness of the tape measure. The next item is a coping saw. Coping saw has a very thin blade so that you can make curved cuts with it. You can remove and install the coping saw blade by loosening the handle applying a little bit of pressure and popping the blade out. Pops into this little notch right here and then when you're done ready to put it back together pops right back into that joint there and tighten the handle. That's not quite in all the way. There it goes. Okay. Make sure before you put the coping saw away that the blade is back in correctly so the next person can use it. Okay. Of course you're going to need a pencil. I prefer a mechanical pencil, either a 0.5 or a 0.7 millimeter. You can also use a regular pencil and sharpen it regularly. A sharp pencil is going to be much better for you for making lines. Next on the list is a block plane that lives in this big drawer here. This is like a chisel, but with a flat shoe on it to make a flat surface. These might come apart while you're using them. They're pretty easy to put back together. To adjust this, simply flip this lever sideways. It loosens the top plate. You can make the blade go farther forward by turning the screw clockwise. Or you can make a shallower cut, making the blade go back by turning that counterclockwise. Lock that lever when you're done. If this doesn't lock all the way, unlock it. Turn this screw right here just a little bit counterclockwise with your thumbnail and try again. And keep adjusting this counterclockwise until you can make this go all the way over. Okay. Conversely, if it's too loose, you can tighten this. This will come off and you've got your adjusting shoe here and the blade fits on like this. The blade has a bevel right here. The bevel edge goes up. When we set this in here, you need to lock the blade into this piece here. 
set this like this and lock it. Occasionally, you might find one of these that's been put together incorrectly and you might see that the shoe goes through the blade and you'll try to put it together and it won't work. So it's okay to take this apart, put the blade in, set it in the center notch, put the top plate back on, and lock it down. When you're not using the block plane, set it on, set it on its edge. Okay. One of the measuring tools we'll use besides the measuring tape is a combination square. We can use a combination square a number of different ways. It has this thumb screw right here that allows me to loosen the blade and slide it back and forth. By doing this, I can line the blade up right so it's on an inch mark, and now I can use this for measuring as well as for finding square. It also has a level on it, so if I want to adjust the blade again, I can look at that bubble and find out how level it is. When you're done using the combination square, reset it so that it's about in the middle. Please don't take the combination squares apart because they're sometimes hard to get back together. I just realized looking at this packet that I've labeled this as a chisel. I have chisel right here. That's actually called a file. I'm going to cross that out and fix that right now. If you find that on your packet, this one here is called a file, and I'll show that to you. The files are in the top of the cabinet, and they have two edges. The top of the file is curved for getting inside corners. The bottom of the file is flat. What the file is used for is smoothing out surfaces, maybe from a, a cut you made with a coping saw. This is the step you'd use before sandpaper. It won't leave a smooth surface, but it will remove a lot of wood. The last tool on our list is a tri-square. It's in this top drawer with the combination squares. So a tri-square functions the same, except that it's not adjustable. We can use a tri-square for measuring lengths or thicknesses, and we can also use it for checking square. One thing we'll use a tri-square a lot for in this shop is checking the fences of tools, especially power tools. We want to make sure that our, our tool fences are perfectly square before we use them. And this tri-square also has a leveling bubble on it.